Are you trying to figure out how you can limit your administrators on your Microtik devices? Do you want to see how you can potentially up your security game a little bit? Or just to make sure that your Microtik as a secure it can be when it comes to your user authentication? Hopefully this video can help you. So let's dive into it and look at how we can properly manage our Microtik administrators. I am the Networkberg and this is the 12th video in an MTCNA series which is part of a larger playlist that you're welcome to follow along with. This just mainly covers all of the MTCNA topics and all of that wonderful, wonderful stuff. Now first thing we want to do is actually jump onto Winbox. So I'll just open that up quickly and you can also do this from your command line but I like using Winbox so let me jump on using my current credentials. And then if we want to manage any administrator accounts locally on the Microtik, we can actually navigate to the system and users field. Now this is extremely useful if you want to create local accounts on your Microtik. If you want to add separate admin accounts for each user to be able to log in with, it's also worth noting that you can limit or restrict access what each admin account can potentially do. By default, there might be a full access group Maybe you want to tweak it a little bit so certain admins can only do certain things. And the pretty cool thing is with Microtik as well, if people are using Webfig to manage your devices, you could even create custom skins so they can only see specific things when they log on with Webfig. But this does not necessarily apply to stuff like Winbox or to the command line itself. So just something to take note of. And the first thing that we can see is we are prompted with a current user, which is the admin account, which is there by default for all Microtik devices. But before we look at the admin account itself, it's worth noting there are a few configuration settings that you can set. You can do something like the AAA setup where you can use a Radius server for authentication as well. Now, I'm not going to use a Radius server in this example, and you shouldn't need to know how to do that for your MTCNA. But it is worth mentioning that this is where you can come in, you can set this up, and then you can basically set up authentication to a Radius server. Now, the other interesting part is the settings tab. If I click on this, you can now actually enforce various password rules or requirements for your users whenever they get set, because maybe you want to make sure that the password is a specific length, maybe like eight characters long, you can do that. You've also got something like the minimum categories. And what I want you to think about this is as you remember when people tell you, please use a password, but use uppercase and lowercase and special characters and, and numbers and stuff like that. That's basically all it is. You can tell the marketing, hey, users need to use either just plain, they can use whatever they want, which is zero, or you can do one, which is like with uppercase or two with uppercase and lowercase or three, that is adding numbers as, as well or even as number four, which would be now with the special character. So users will have to use an uppercase, a lowercase, a number, a special character, you know, just to make their password fine tuned. So it's not as easy to brute force if somebody's trying to maliciously get onto your Microtik device. Now, these are just some of the important settings that you can set by default. Let's look at how we can go about adding a group so you can effectively say what a admin account can do if you link them to that group. So I can just click on this groups field and by default, we've got a full group, a read group, or a write group. Now, let's quickly see if we want to create a new group. What we could do is click on the new button, and you could give the group a name, whatever name you want it to be. So maybe I could say SSH-users. And now for the SSH users, you can enable only SSH for them. So if they try and telnet, it's going to fail with this account that belongs to this group. Same for FTP, people won't be able to FTP into the Microtik. But maybe you still want people to be able to read, which means they can view the configuration, but they can't change the configuration. So let's create this SSH, let's call it SSH read dash users, and let's apply this. And then once that is applied, we can see it's now been added as a part of all of the different groups here. And what we could do is go back to our users, and now let's see if we can create ourselves a new admin account. So it's as easy as clicking on the new button, and then once we've clicked on the new button, we can now actually specify a username. So I could make this SSH test. I could specify the group it belongs to. So that was the SSH-read-users. So let me select that. And now just like with the IP services in another video, you can actually specify allowed addresses. Now think of this as a very basic firewall rule where you can set where people can authenticate from. This is very useful if you want to restrict access 
for specific users, especially your admin accounts, because maybe they should only be able to access the MicroTix over a management network or from your corporate ranges or stuff like that. You don't necessarily want people from the internet to be able to just come in from any IP address and be poten potentially be able to log on to your MicroTix and cause all kinds of havoc. So here I can specify maybe, hey, if you want to SSH, you can come in from my management network's IP range, which is 192.168.88.0/24 in my example. And I can now also set a password for my admin account. You can even do stuff like click on expire password. And that just basically means it just prompts the password to expire and the user needs to change it. So that's a very basic action that you can do. But let's just set ourselves a quick password. I just don't recall if I set that special character requirement now. So let's see. Let's make it so let's quickly set a password for ourselves. I might just make this something like this. That's just a bunch of different numbers, uppercase, lowercase, letters, numbers, all that stuff. Let's just apply it and see what happens. So now we've got the account added and I can see there is now an SSH test user. So let's quickly see, can I actually log on with this SSH test user using maybe PuTTY? So let me open up my PuTTY quickly. And then from PuTTY, let's try and SSH onto the MicroTik. I think I might actually have the ports changed from a previous video. So let's just quickly see if that's still the case. Let me go into IP services. And then from the services, yes, I can see I actually change this SSH port. So that's useful to know if you're following around, along with the uh, video. But let me just change it back to 22, which is the default SSH port. And let's quickly log on to 192.168.88.1 on SSH and see, can I authenticate with, what was it? SSH admin or SSH test, SSH test. And let me type in my password. And there we go. I can log on to the MicroTik from SSH test. And if I remember correctly, I only added read on the account itself. So it can only see the configuration, but let's see if I try and add an IP. What will it do? 001 slash 24 on ether two. There we see it just actually just tells me it's script error action canceled. It's, so it's not gonna work since this account does not have the appropriate access. It's only able to read and it's only able to SSH. What if I try to win box? I think it's pretty self-explanatory what's gonna happen, but let's just test it out and make sure that is the case. So if I try and log in with SSH test onto the same MicroTik, it's just going to tell me the username and password is wrong. However, if I go back to my user group, I can quickly just amend it and let's just change the group to the full user group, apply the change. And if I try and Winbox now, it's as easy as just alt tabbing back to it. Let's try and connect. Winbox now works. So now we are actually effectively enforcing different types of rules for our admin accounts where we can specify what type of passwords they're using. We can specify stuff like the groups where we can enforce policies where we can say what these users are able to do if they try and authenticate. And if they do authenticate, can they read config? Can they write config? Can they SSH in? What can the users do when they effectively log in? Now we should look at the different policies quickly just to make sure we understand what all of them are doing. So I'll just go back to groups quickly. And if we look here, we can see there's a bunch of different things. So we can set Winbox access, we can set SSH, we can set read, we can set web access. And all of these policies you can actually read up on on the MicroTik documentation. So let me just get onto those documentations quickly. So docs help.microtik.com forward slash docs. And if we just navigate quickly to the policy, we should see there is a user policy section. And if we scroll down, it's actually going to tell us exactly what each of the different login policies can do. And I highly recommend you come and look here at these different options that you have if you want to create different user accounts. And if you want to assign them different policies, this is where you'll necessarily come and do that. It's also worth mentioning again, by default, your MicroTik should have a password enforced if it is a new MicroTik. However, some of the older devices is admin blank, and it is very much encouraged that you change that password for the admin account. You change it to something that only you will know, or you could also potentially disable the admin account and add your own custom admin administrator account. 
Reason being is if people are malicious and they go online, they try and find the default credentials for most devices, and they'll try and use those default credentials to log onto your MicroTik potentially. So if you've already got the admin account password already changed, or if you disable the account and have a completely separate admin account, that's just going to make your MicroTik so much more secure. Now, I highly recommend if you're going to disable the admin account, first create your new special admin that you use as a super user almost. So let's just call this the network Berg. And I can assign myself full access and I can just quickly hit on OK. And then what I could do is first log in with this new admin account. So if I go into Unbox, let's just make sure that I've actually got access. I don't think I set the password now, which is quite silly. Or, or did I set a password? Let's just quickly change it. So I'm not 100% sure if I did. Maybe I did it on autopilot. So now that the password's been set, let's just quickly log in with my the network Berg account. And then once I've authenticated, now I know it is safe to disable the old admin account. So I can go into my system, I can go back to users, and I can just disable the system account. Now I know that people won't be able to maliciously attack or get onto the MicroTik using an admin credential with whatever password they might brute force because it's never going to work. But you could even go one step further, which I've already done in another video that I'll link at the end of this video that you can follow along with. But you could actually create custom SSH key pairs that you can use to manage your MicroTik devices, which is super nice because then you don't even need to use a password to authenticate. You're using this special private key to authenticate your MicroTik and it just works. It's really awesome. I, I love it when we're using SSH key pairs, but that's more or less for if you're going to use the command line to manage your MicroTik. If you're using Winbox, you're still probably going to be having an account like this that you want to access the MicroTik through on the Winbox port. Oh, there's one last thing that I think we can also just quickly have a look at, and that is the active users. So if we navigate to active users, you can actually see which people has already authenticated on this MicroTik, where they've connected from, and which groups they belong to. This is just a nice little log so that you understand who's been accessing the MicroTik, but it's not necessarily something that you'll actively come and have a look at. The main points that I want you to notice is how you can add new admin accounts, how you can assign different groups for your admin accounts, and then more importantly, one cool last tip, and I'm not sure if you saw that when I authenticated onto the MicroTik. If I go back to my party session, I just log and I just scroll up a little bit. We can actually also see from the system messages if somebody was incorrectly connecting to the MicroTik with an invalid credential. So maybe the wrong username, or it could even maybe be the wrong password. So this is actually just very nice information to have. Anyways, this is where I'm going to end off the video. I hope I've shown you a few cool tricks when it comes to managing your MicroTik administrators. And I'd like to thank you for watching. So stick around, get ready for the next video, and I hope you had fun. See ya, bye.